thing I wanted to especially talk about today. Um, and it is something that I addressed last stream, I think it was. Let me pull up the uh, quote for it. I mean, it's just, it's just the thing I wrote. There it is. Let me put that, uh, like, right there. So I wanted to delve into this topic a little bit deeper. Um, this idea of the conscious and subconscious is just one of many metaphors, stories, that Neville and other people are going to relay to you. Um, these are just stories you telling your, that you're telling yourself, that you're remembering, in order to understand through the frame of the human mind what is happening in this so-called reality. However, the conscious and subconscious um, is a duality, and it's being taught to you as a duality so that you can understand that we live in a non-duality. The brain likes dichotomies, it likes dualities, so that's how you're being introduced to it. However, there is no separation. Um, it's just that on this level, which is the total limit of contraction, as Neville calls it, um, you're going to have a fairly consistent day-to-day -day experience. Um, and so things are going to seem less malleable than they actually are in dreams that's closer to how your real self is. Uh, that's when you're much closer to who you actually are, which is God. Um, but so the conscious subconscious duality is, is put in place as a story um, so that you can understand that you have infinity available to you at all times. However, on this plane of existence, it seems not to be there. So it seems to be subconscious. However, that is also an illusion. Now, this idea of the subconscious can be a limiting one because you will say things like, well, oh, well, I don't know um, what assumption is limiting me or blocking my manifestation because it's subconscious. It's not known to me. Well, number one, that's an error. That's a total error. It's, <laughs> it's a complete error, but that sort of thought you can allow, you can put in place to constrain and limit your own awareness of things that you want to know and should know and need to know. A great counter assumption to that is I'm always presented with the information I need when I need it. Nothing is ever withheld to, from me. I always have access to the to whatever information I want and certainly whatever I need. It will just come to me when I need it. Um, but so there's a lot of little because we have this story of the subconscious and people start believing in it, um, there's all these other little stories and their assumptions, um, and they're just, you know, they can manifest out or not. Um, but be careful which ones you take on, because there's a lot of little, they're really myths, but these assumptions are no different from any other assumption. You can animate them or not animate them as you please. Um, and, you know, I feel like Taking on too many of these, putting these in place as, as restrictions is usually not a good thing because a lot of them are very, very silly uh, to just um, go over some of the ones I hear a lot. Um, so the subconscious doesn't understand negation. So it doesn't, under, like if I say, um, I don't want to get sick, it doesn't understand that. Or... Um, just putting not in front of something like um, I want a blue shirt but not with any logos on it. The idea is that the subconscious somehow doesn't understand that because you're focused on having a logo on the shirt temporarily. Um, the subconscious doesn't understand humor. Honestly, this, this is just a um, total conflation of when Neville talks about uh, God is no respecter of persons. When he says that, what he means is no state is dispermitted. No state is forbidden. Nothing in creation is kept from you. You are allowed to experience it all on whatever level you're allowing into frame right now. So it's, it's none of it's being kept from you. It has nothing to do with its ability to comprehend things that it created, okay? Um, 
oh, uh, the subconscious thinks in pictures, okay? Or the subconscious is blind is another one I've heard, which makes, which is very funny because sometimes the same person will say both of those. It's like, it's blind, but it thinks in pictures. All right, great. Uh, I, this, we have a, um, oh, who's Jacob and Esau's father? I'm, I'm just blanked on it. But yeah, we have a, we have a example of, of, of the blind man who sees in pictures right there. Uh, what's some other ones I've heard? They're all really silly. Mm, those are the four common ones that come up. The The one about humor is also one that Joseph Murphy um, has talked about in Power of the Subconscious Mind. We haven't done Joseph Murphy in the channel, and I may never, because, well, because reasons. And I'm going to give some of the reasons right here. And this is another uh, bad myth about bad assumption, bad myth about the subconscious, uh, which is, again, something we've merely imagined, um, that it will somehow punish you and withhold things from you if you are violating some moral code, whether or not you necessarily uh, agree to this moral code. So he gave an example, oh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, it's in part of the subconscious mind, of a guy who got accused of stealing from his job because he was cheating on his wife. Somehow that was the redress uh, that his mind um, enacted upon himself. <laughs> um, so and he, he also gives the example of a guy who, and let's be real, unless you're the guy, this is fucking hilarious. There was a guy who said he would give his arm for his daughter to live and so, like, he lost his arm in a car accident, and whatever affliction his daughter had, she was healed. It, it was it was roughly that. I mean, the guy literally did lose a limb uh, because, like, that's what he was thinking. And Joseph Murphy's point is that it doesn't understand um, metaphor. It doesn't understand uh, when you're being humorous or silly or exaggerating. Okay, so these are all total bullshit, complete nonsense. Uh, there's, I mean, there's only one truth, which is your God. That's the only truth. There's no other truth in existence. The only truth is your God. I mean, beyond that, there are other little truths like, because you're a God, you can do anything. Because you already created everything. Um, but so let's go into why these are myths. Though I've already answered it. Um, so this, the subconscious is something we're imagining. Um, if we want to, so everything, being that we're discussing a non-dualistic frame, everything that exists, ever has existed, ever will exist, in eternity, from infinity, is God. It's all God. Um, the subconscious, even in, in any frame of whoever talks about it, is always likened to uh, being, you know, the omnipotence, omnipresence of God. That's the, you know, all power, all knowing, all existing um, aspect of God that's present in you, in your mind and body. Well, this is the being, the creator, the only power. Um, I think it understands uh, language because it invented it. I think it understands humor, which it also invented. Also, how could humor exist if it didn't understand it? <laughs> um, I think it can fucking see, being that it invented eyes, and quite often a symbol of divinity is the eye. I mean, so ridiculous. Um, yeah, negation. Well, it, you know, I think it can understand negatives. I can think it understands contractions too, being that it created all language. So this idea that infinite absolute power doesn't understand something and is going to express it incorrectly is crazy. And your power is so absolute that you can decide something silly like that and believe in something silly like that and have it happen um, as a result, <laughs> which is extra, extra wild. Um, but so, I mean, you have to just think about, like, when someone's talking about the subconscious, what are they talking about? Um, and, okay, so, 
another thing I've heard is people will talk about my subconscious and your subconscious like they're somehow separate. No, and Neville's explicit, explicit. In several of the books and in many lectures, there is only one God, one power. There's only one subconscious mind. It's it it's this it's the same being. It's the same entity. It's the same mind. Okay, transcendentalists talk about this and approach this in different language, but it's the same concept. It's the idea that there is a universal consciousness that you have access to. Um, and Neville will tell you it's through the imagination, um, but you can't escape it. You're in the ocean. You're existing within it at all times. You know, transcendentalists will tell you to meditate in order to access it. But it's always here. It's omnipresent because there's nothing other than God. So there's nothing other than subconscious mind. You know, there's no separation between internal and external. Uh, there's a great, great quote in the one we just did um, where... Well, it was the one I was just editing in, in um, Control Your Inner Conversations, where Neville said there is um, the exterior world is nothing more than your inner thoughts uh, externalized. Or, you know, the f refrain people really like is um, the whole vast world is nothing more than yourself pushed out. Um, in other words, it, it's just you. It's all you. It's all a continuous you, a continuous whole, uh, which is uh, the living God. But so, yeah, I hope that anyone who has uh, believed in those silly assumptions will let them go. Um, just because I think they make it, they make you uh, really doubt and question yourself. There's other little sneaky ones like, and Neville has some of them too, like you need to put things at a certain tense. So, in other words, at a certain place in time, instead of saying, I will be rich, you claim I am rich. Now, he has a little a little nuance to that where he's talking about how much you inhabit the state, how much you embody the state is at issue there. However, if you can say, I will be rich and feel like you're already rich now, that's fine. That's the point. The point of any of it is to identify yourself with what you desire. So, like, let's say if your desire is SP, as it's called, specific person, special person, you know, usually a romantic partner, but it might be a family member, a friend, whatever, and you want to manifest uh, contact or, like, a really um, enjoyable event with them, you know, so a date or, um, you know, something you want to go to with them especially, if you start thinking, um, like instead of saying I am in contact with so and so or I talk daily to so and so, you say I will be in contact with so and so, I know this, I believe this firmly, and I will be talking daily to so and so, we will go to this certain um, event, you know, we will be, uh, you know, a couple friends, uh, you know, a, a renewed strength and, um, family bond, whatever the, the relationship is, and that allows you to feel that this is already so, the language doesn't matter. It's fine. Infinite intelligence within you understands what you are thinking about. Now, here's the thing I find. This is a reminder that I think doesn't get put out there enough. Um, when it comes to all these assumptions, you will see how silly they are when you realize just just answer this question. Like right now, I'm not going to... These are rhetorical, but I'm not going to lead you on. I want you to answer them. And I want you to think about them. Where did your desires come from? Okay? Think about that. Where do your affirmations, your scenes, your knowledge of techniques, any of that, where does that come from? You know, if you've read Neville, you know his opinion on it, right? And I, you go back and read it and control your inner conversations. The exterior role is nothing more than your own inner conversations externalized. So where do these desires come from? Where do these scenes come from? Where do these affirmations come from? Where does the manifestations themselves come from? Where does any of it come from? Okay. You have to really 
I mean, people want to poo-poo logic, but it will help you a lot. It will help you a lot to think critically about stupid assumptions that are out there in the exterior world. And honestly, I know the only reason I manifested them is because early on I wanted rules. I wanted little rules. I wanted a routine. I want, And I had a lot of like, well, is this how this really works? Is this how this really works? And there was a whole little pattern of like figuring it out and problem solving and doubting, well, I don't know if that works. I don't know if this works. And so it manifested a whole bunch of nonsense that happens when you focus on, well, what if I do that instead of this? And is that true? And is this true? Like the whole questioning nonsense will create a lot of these, um, you know, silly answers that are not true, um, that don't need to be true. They can be true if you want them to be true, but they don't need to be true. So you can decide that your subconscious only does not under your subconscious again something your only something you're imagining does not understand uh, negatives, and uh, you better be very careful about your affirmations. However, look, where did the affirmations come from? Where did they come from? Even if you didn't come up with them, they didn't come to your mind, they, you saw them on a Facebook group. Okay, where did that come from? Come on, guys. Come on. You have to think critically if you're going to really... Um, if you're going to honestly if you're going to teach this at some point um applying it you can deal with a lot of those rules if you want it's going to create a lot of unnecessary struggle for you but if you want to explain this to someone else and see them have a really fabulous success you need to let go of a lot of the limiting beliefs and assumptions and your your personal experience of manifestation is going to be so much better once you let go of all that bullshit. All right, so today, today, uh, continuing with five lessons, um, and let me put up the link, because five lessons is like all of Devil's work. You can find it online for free. Um, this one's at archive.org. The whole thing is there. He did it as a workshop. I don't have any other historical info um, to formally present right now. Um, but I, I don't know if we're going to get through all of Lesson 2 today. Maybe just part. Might do all of it. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to take a break and finish it all off today. Um, and this one is titled Assumptions Hardened into Fact. Um, if you have just found my stream YouTube videos, because I'll let it go to this point, and you're, you either haven't read these or you're not familiar with them or you just want to come across them again, which is was a lot of my desire was I want to reread them again. This will be my third or fourth time uh, reading five lessons. Um, go back and listen to uh, chapter one, Consciousness is the Only Reality. It's in part 1A and 1B. Um, and now we're on lesson two of the five lessons. And also, if you have any, especially if you're still in that pattern of having a lot of questions about manifesting and how, how all of this works, I mean... Spoiler alert, you decide how it works. But you can read Neville's answers to what I guarantee. I guarantee your question was answered in the Q&A of five lessons. It's at the very, it's at the end. It, I think it might be included on lesson five if you go to archive.org. Or it might have its own page. Um, either or, if it's in lesson five, it's going to be at the very bottom. Where he had questions and answer and People asked a bunch of questions, and I guarantee you one of your, one or all of your questions, or most of your questions, were asked and answered um, by him in, in at that point in time. Uh, so you can go check that out. Um, all right, so let's just scoot over, and we'll get right into it. <clears throat> 